Hey saddle hunters, thanks for tuning in to watch another video. If you've been following the saddle hunting community for long, you know that the Mad Rock Safeguard has become an extremely popular device for one stick climbing, specifically for rappelling. Well, they're, they're out of stock all over the place because of the aluminum shortage, and a lot of people are wondering, what can I use besides a Mad Rock Safeguard when I'm one stick climbing and rappelling down from the tree? Well, today's video, we're gonna talk in depth about all of the alternatives that you might use to, when you can't find or, or really don't wanna spend the money even on a Mad Rock Safeguard. So there's three options that I think are really good that we're gonna look at. The first one is an ATC device. I recommend buying a guide ATC because you can also use this to SRT climb if you're interested in doing that. And I've got a video of how to do that. I'll link to that above. This device is about 30 bucks. It's middle of the road of what we're gonna look at today. Another common device is this figure eight. This is great for rappelling. This is a really cheap device, about 15 bucks, works good. Every one of these devices has advantages and has disadvantages. And we're gonna walk through each of those in detail. The third device I'm gonna show you, you may not have heard about before, but it's my favorite of the three. This is the Mamut Smart 2.0. This functions similarly to an ATC, but it's got a built-in safety feature that automatically grabs the rope in the case of a fall. So really cool device, guys. My favorite of the three of them. I'm gonna walk you through how you can use any of these devices instead of a Mad Rock Safeguard for one stick climbing and rappelling. So let's jump into it. All right, before I show you guys those devices specifically, I wanna talk about it sending the tree when you're not using a Mad Rock Safeguard. So when you're ascending with the Mad Rock, it's kinda of nice because that lever makes it really quick for you to adjust your position relative to the stick. So let's say I've got a mad rock on here and I'm above my stick and I wanna reach down and grab my stick, but I find I'm just too high up. I need to let some length out. Well, with the mad rock, all you do is grab the brake side of the rope, grab the lever, pull it, drop yourself a couple inches and reach down and grab your stick, you're ready to go. You can ascend no problem using a friction hitch and you can even adjust your position up or down depending on what you wanna do if you use a tender. The problem with tenders is that most of them have to be slid onto the rope from the bottom. And with a 40 foot rappel rope, that's kind of a pain in the neck, really big hassle. So what I use is a keychain. You can get these at Eastern Woods Outdoors. I'll put a link in the description below. Nice thing about this keychain is it has little bars that open. So you can leave it attached to your carabiner. And then when you put your friction hitch on here, and just let me know, I use a, a Schwabish hitch and very releases easy, just a good knot. So I use a Schwabish, but the nice thing about this keychain is that when I get it hooked up, I can just clip it onto my nine millimeter canyon and I can tend the rope. So let's say I wanted to go a little bit lower from where I'm at right now. I've just got to stand up on my platform, take pressure off the hitch, reach up and pull it down. And I can let a couple inches out, sit back down into it. Now I can reach down and get my stick, no problem. Let me show you that again. Release tension, pull down on the hitch, a couple inches, reach down, very easy to do. Now let's say I find that I'm too low and I want to sit up a little bit higher. All I'm gonna do because that tender is grab the brake side of the rope, once again, stand up, and then just pull it and that tender is gonna take the slack out. Very easy to do. We'll go down again. So that would be my recommendation for your setup to ascend the tree. It's just simpler than any using any of these mechanical devices. So now that you know how to ascend the tree and adjust on the way up, let's break out the ATC device and I'll show you how that works. All right, so with any of these devices, the manufacturers recommend that you back them up some way, somehow. That way, if you were rappelling and let's say you got stung by a bee, for example, and you let go of the rope, you don't just hit the ground. So there's a couple of different ways you can back up an ATC. Uh, the first way that's, that's very popular, you would hook your ATC up on your rope. They're very simple to hook up. You're just gonna take a bite of rope, take your ACT, device, make sure that the groove side is facing toward the tag end side of the rope. Put your biter rope down through there. Your carabiner then clips through the rope and that wire loop, and then it hooks onto your bridge. 
that's all there is to it. That device is hooked up. Now, you can see the rope moves through there very, very freely, but how do you back that up? Well, one way is to use what they call an auto block. So this right here is Sterling hollow block two rope. This is a 13 and a half inch, basically loop. This is really easy to use. So I clip it down here on my saddle. I've got a rappel loop on this saddle, but you can use your lineman's belt as well. But basically all you're gonna do to tie your auto block is take your loop, hook it at one end onto your carabiner and then wrap it around the rope. And you, I like four or five wraps, you just, wrap it around the loop, and then you hook it onto your carabiner. Tighten the screw gate on your carabiner, and now I have a friction hitch that will hold the rope and prevent me from, from falling. So if I were gonna rappel, all I would do is hold onto the rope down here and tend it on the way down releasing pressure and the rope would slide down through. I'll show you that in a clip right now. So you can see how easy the auto block is to use and that's a preferred method for a lot of people. For me, it's just one extra step that's, that's not necessary. So let me show you how I prefer to hook this up. I'm gonna hook up the ATC just like I did before and I'm gonna pull it as high as I can get it and then bring it down on my brake hand. And I'm just gonna use the friction hitch that I used to ascend and hump from as my backup. So to go down, all I'm gonna do is put my hand above the friction hitch and pull it down toward the device and then slowly feed out rope with my brake hand. And I just continue to tend it on the way down. If I wanted to stop to take a stick off, just let go of it, it grabs me, I'm fine. And then to go down, I just bring it towards the device and I repel. All right, so you can see how easy that is and why that's my preferred method. You just hook the ATC on there and, and start to go down. The next device I wanna show you is the figure eight. This is very, very popular for a couple of reasons. Once again, it's easy to use. You just are gonna take a bite of rope, you're gonna feed it from the back through the bigger hole then the bite's gonna go over the lower hole. You're gonna pull it tight, just like that. You take your carabiner and hook it through that lower hole. Tighten your screw gate and it's attached. That's all there is to it. So you can see, I've got the figure eight hooked up. I can operate this just like I did the guide ATC using this as my backup. So I'm just gonna put my right hand on the tag end of the rope. That's called the brake end. I'm gonna pull down on my friction hitch and repel. So you can see, once again, if I let go, it grabs me and you can move as fast or as slow as you want. You can also use the figure eight, just like I did the guide ATC with the auto block down below. So you can see I've got the auto block hooked up. To repel, all I'm gonna do is release that and slide down. So very easy to go, stop, let go of it, and I'm fine. Now some people don't like to have that friction hitch on there when they rappel, totally understandable. What I would do to make the transition though, is I would, I would first lower the friction hitch down low and, while I'm standing on my platform, keeping it connected the whole time. Then I would reach above it, grab a bite of rope, hook up my, my figure eight like this. The next thing I would do before disconnecting that is take this and make what's called a soft lock. So I'm gonna take the brake side of the rope and I'm gonna bring it up and over. And I'm gonna pull it down through. You can hear that pop. Now that significantly increases my friction. I'm gonna do it a second time to get more friction and that's gonna hold me hands free. You can see if I bounce on that, it's, it's really not going anywhere. So if I wanted, if I was rappelling and I wanted to stop and take my stick off, you can do that, that double lock and, and then operate hands free. This isn't my preferred method because it's not really a great backup, but we're stopping for short periods of time. So a lot of people are very comfortable with it. So let me show you that. I'm gonna pop that out of there. And you can rappel with just the one wrap under the rope. 
with a lot of friction and then you can hold that with one finger so that's how I would repel like this going down the tree and then I want to stop take my stick off just gonna pull it over the top pull it down and now I'm holding it take my stick off to go again just take the big side of the rope over the top pull it out and I can go all right guys we saved the best for last this is my favorite of all three of these devices. This is the Mamut Smart 2.0. This is what they call a passive assisted braking device, meaning that it assists in the braking of the rope, much like the Safeguard, which is an assisted braking device. But it's called a passive braking device because it brakes without any moving parts. So the function is gonna be super similar to the Safeguard, but it doesn't have any in internal moving parts. So I'll show you how it works. Really neat device. It's rated for ropes from 8.7 millimeters to 10.5 millimeters. So most of what everybody's using is kind of in that range, unless you're using Oplux or something. But if you've got nine millimeter rope, this would work really well. I'm using nine millimeter Sterling Canyon CIV. Just an excellent rope, bites and, and holds really well with this device. So that should give you a, a good some pointers, get you headed in the right direction. This device is kind of picky about the type of carabiner that it uses. So I figured I'd just point that out. The directions state that it needs to use an HMS style carabiner. And those are carabiners that are designed specifically for belaying and rappelling. They're typically a little bit wider at the top and a little bit thicker on the shaft portion. And they just help it to bite down on the rope a little bit better. I tried this with a lot of the typical carabiners I had laying around that I use for saddle hunting. And there was a lot of slip in the device with, with incorrectly sized carabiners. So make sure you have an HMS carabiner. So now that I've explained to you a little bit about the device, let me show you why I like it. I, I like it for a couple different reasons. First, I like it because you can use it to climb. You can use it as your positioning aid at hunting height, and then you can repel with it. So it will serve the exact same purpose as a Mad Rock Safeguard. And I wanna walk you through all three of those things right now. Let me begin by showing you how to hook the device up onto the rope. All you're gonna do is take your line, and you're gonna take a bite of rope. You're gonna feed that bite of rope down through the device, much like you would a figure eight, and then Make sure your tag is coming out to the side. For me, I like it coming out to the right side because I'm right-handed. And then your carabiner is just gonna go down in through the middle, tighten down your screw gate, and that's all there is to it. Now you are hooked up in the Mamut Smart 2.0. The directions for this device say that you should always have your hand on the brake side of the rope, as do the directions for the Mad Rock Safeguard. Now, most of you know when you're saddle hunting that it's kind of hard in some situations. So what I like to do is just use that same auto block that I showed you earlier with the other devices and hook it up down below the Mamut Smart 2.0. That's going to give me a backup and a little bit of confidence if I ever have to let go of the brake side of the rope. So four or five wraps usually does the trick with this Sterling hollow block. The other nice thing that that does, this device functions by pivoting, right? So the nose here pivots down when it's kind of in this braking mode. So you wanna make sure that the rope is coming off the nose and then the thing's angled downward. You don't wanna get the rope up like this parallel to this other rope because then it can have a tendency to act like a tubular belay device, like an ATC, and you could slip. It takes it basically out of this, this braking mode. So nice thing about running the auto block is it just keeps the rope headed down in the right direction and provides you a little bit of extra security with a backup. So now that the device is on, you know a little bit about how it functions, let's talk about how it works in a hunting scenario. So I'm standing on my one stick right now. The first thing we're gonna talk about is how this device is helpful when you're ascending the tree. So let's say I I'm made my first move and I wanna make my second move. I'm gonna reach down here and try to grab my stick. Oh, I'm too high, can't reach it. Need to let a little length out. I'm gonna take my right hand and put it on the brake side of the rope, tend that prussic, and I'm just gonna tilt the device and I'm gonna let a little length out. Now, the directions say you're supposed to put your thumb on the nose and tilt up like this, okay? 
and let a little bit out. I found that that's a little bit harder to control. So what I've been doing is putting my pointer finger underneath the nose, my thumb on the back side, and just tilting it like that. Let a few inches out, and now I can reach down and grab my stick. So really easy to do that. Let me show you again. Just gonna tilt it nice and slowly. Reach down. So it's just as easy as most any other device when you wanna take length up. Same principle applies. You're gonna hold the brake side of the rope I like to give a little slack through the auto block. Just gonna stand up, take pressure off the device, and you're gonna pull it up. You wanna keep pressure on the brake side of the rope as you sit down into it. That just helps it to seat. So then I'm gonna tighten up my auto block. That's all there is to, to taking length out of the device. I'll let it down, show you that one more time. A little slack, pull it up. You do get a little bit of noise but I think some stealth strips will take care of that real quick. Most of the noise comes from the carabiner. So a little hockey tape or stealth strips on the inside of the device, I think it'd take care of all that noise. So super easy if you wanna make adjustments to uh, the rope when you're going up and down. And the nice thing is you can make the adjustments while the device is weighted. You can't do that with a friction hitch. So if I've got all my weight into the saddle, I can still reach out here and let it down and make those adjustments, much like the safeguard. So. Now let's imagine I'm at hunting height. This device is super handy to make those quick little adjustments that you need to make at hunting height. So let's say I'm set up here leaning and I want to go into a sitting position. I just need to let a little rope out, right? A little rope out, I'm into the tree. Now I'm sitting. That was super easy. Let's say I'm sitting and I want to go to leaning. Same exact principle, right? Pull it up, sit back down into it. Now I can lean. The auto block, I just kind of like to keep it fairly, fairly tight at hunting height. And you'll notice when I stand up, this doesn't really move. The slack doesn't cause the line to slide through the device. So you can see that I stand up, sit back down. The device doesn't really go anywhere at all. Uh, the other nice thing, if I wanted to move around the back side of the tree, when you do that, as you're pivoting on your ring of steps, let's say, your rope wraps around the tree and it gets taken up. So you typically want to let a little length out. So same thing, let's say I'm pivoting here, I'm gonna go around the back side of the tree, just gonna let a couple inches out, move around the back side of the tree, and now I'm on the same level as I was on the other side of the tree, I'm not higher. So really easy to, to let length out, to go around the tree. Just a super, super device, guys, accomplishes I think everything that like a rope man or a Kong duck does at hunting height, especially when it's paired with the auto block, it's just really, really solid and secure. So this is a really good device, guys. I've been super impressed with it for climbing and for adjustments at hunting height. But of course the question becomes, how is it for repelling? Well, it's the same as every other device for repelling. You're just gonna tend the rope with your brake hand, give it a little tilt, and it's really easy to control the speed. The more, you know, the faster you tilt it, you can almost free fall. So I like to just go nice and slow, take some length out. If I wanna stop, I just let go of it and it grabs me. Let me show you that again. Repelling, I let go of it, and it just stops and grabs me. So super, super nice. I'll show you, I'll take a lot of slack in here. I'm gonna adjust it up higher actually. All right, so I put a decent amount of slack here in the tag end just to show you this. I'm gonna repel, let go of it, and it just grabs. Repel, let go of it, it just grabs. So then I can swing into the tree, take my stick off the tree, and continue my way down. So really smooth device for repelling and easy to, to stop on the way down. This device is just fantastic all around, in my opinion. Now, you gotta make sure you have the right carabiner. And don't be afraid to play around with a bunch of carabiners until you get the right one that works for your body size. I'm about 165 pounds, and this one locks up really solid for me. Your mileage may vary depending on your weight. If you do get a little slip, just make sure that you're running the auto block, and as long as you keep your auto block tight, you can pretty much eliminate any kind of slip. So. This is a super great device, guys. It's about half the price of a safeguard and they're in stock right now. So if you don't wanna run the safeguard or you don't like the mechanical stuff, this I think is a fantastic alternative to 
the safeguard. So let me just give you guys a few concluding thoughts now about all three of the devices we looked at and we'll wrap up. All right, so let's close up by talking about the ATC or the Guide ATC first. This is a really nice device. I've used this a lot in the past. It's been my preferred method up till this point for a couple different reasons. Number one, the guide version allows you to climb SRT. So it's just handy to have around if you think you might do that style of climbing ever. The other nice thing is that it's really, really easy to control the speed while you rappel because it has these little grooves for friction. So you just you know, pull it tighter into those grooves, you get more friction, you go slower. Probably the, really the only downside to this is you gotta tie on an auto block or you gotta use your, your friction hitch as a backup. There's really not a safe way to do this without, uh, you can't lock off, I guess, without some kind of a hitch and friction. So that's the only downside, but really good device and only 30 bucks. So it's helpful to have in your arsenal. The next device we talked about was the figure eight. And the figure eight is super popular, I think because they're cheap, right? They're, they're $15. And the biggest advantage of this is if you're a guy who doesn't want to run a friction hitch and tend it on the rappel, which I would never recommend doing, you can tie off on this on your way down, right? Without some sort of a hollow block or an auto block. Now, I don't think that's recommended by anybody, but you can tie that soft lock and then put another wrap in it to kind of make it a harder lock, take your stick off. So that's an option. If you guys just want one piece of gear that'll do it, this can. I've found that it's just a little bit harder to work with than the ATC, in my opinion. You got to throw the extra wrap in there to really slow down the rappelling. Otherwise, it just kind of free spools. I think it's harder to manage, like right when you're initially getting set up. But it's a good device. The, the rock climbing world is kind of navigated away from these in favor of other devices like the guide ATC and like passive assisted braking devices. So that's probably just something that would be helpful for us as a saddle hunting community to keep in mind. The last device that I wanna kind of summarize is that Mamut Smart 2.0. And as I mentioned, this is a passive assisted braking device. I really like this device. In my opinion, it has all the functionality of a safeguard. I, I back it up with the auto block just because the auto block weighs nothing and it's super easy and fast to put on. But you can ascend with this and change your position really, really quickly. You can use it as a positioning aid at hunting height. It can repel really smoothly and you can stop for hands-free stick removal as you're repelling down very easily just by letting go of the device and, and waiting it, it locks up. Only downside is that you've got to have an HMS style carabiner. I know not everybody has those laying around, so it might be something you have to, to go out and buy and it might be an additional expense, but it, it locks up really good with those style carabiners. And, and in my opinion is the best alternative to the Mad Rock Safeguard that I've found. And this is what I'm going to use in my one stick climbing setup this coming fall. So anyway, guys, I hope this is helpful. You just got to sort through the information and decide which one of these devices works best for you and your hunting style and what your preferences are. Some people are going to value security over anything else. Some people are going to value ease of function over anything else. And so you've just got to decide what's important to you and then pick a corresponding device. So once again, I appreciate your support. Thanks for tuning in to the Saddle Hunting channel here on YouTube. And if you've enjoyed this video, I'd appreciate it if you'd like and subscribe.